Amen. To God be the praise. Amen. Jesus be all the glory. Amen. Amen. May I ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one, verse number seven. Let's read together loudly. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So read in such a way that your ears are able to hear the word of God. Amen. Faith is generated, faith is produced when you, when your ears hear the word of God. Not having heard, hearing, current. So can read, let's read together. What does it say? It says, for God has not given us. Are you with me? He has not given us. There are certain things that God gives and there are certain things that God does not give. He says, he has not given us the spirit of fear. But rather, he has given us what? The spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me, church? See, if you're, expecting, if you're expecting the spirit of fear from God, it's never going to happen. No matter how much you pray and how much you fast. Because he said, God does not give us the spirit of fear. In other version, he says, God does not give us a spirit of timidity. So if you behave and conduct yourself like a timid person, it is not from God. Are you with me, church? If you behave yourself foolish, if you behave yourself like a stupid person, or you behave in the way you conduct yourself and you behave like a timid person, then that is not from God. Then you need correction. Are you with me, church? There has to be some realignment needs to be done. Because the Bible says, on the contrary, the Bible says, he says, he gives us a spirit of power and of love and of what? A sound mind. Another version says, sound mind is wholesome mind, healthy mind, sound mindedness. You're able to do, or you're able to, what you call, is make the correct judgment. Your decision making is sound. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. As much as the Bible says that God gives importance to the heart, God gives equal importance to our heads also. As much as God gives importance to heart, the Bible says, man, uh, God, the, the word of God said, God stole Samuel from that's where we got it. He said, man looks at the outward appearance. He looks at the outside. But God looks into the inside, he looks into the heart. So as much as God is interested, as much as God wants our heart, he also is very much interested in our head. Are you with me, church? Why? Because as much as the Holy Spirit, as much as the Spirit of God wants to control, have a control over the mind, so much also is the Spirit of the world wants to control the mind. They have always constant war. Are you with me, church? The spirit of God wants to come and take over our minds. That's why he says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power, of a sound. When the spirit of God is in control, you'll always make right judgments. You'll always be sound mind. No matter what situation you're thrown into, your mind will always be at peace. Hallelujah. But at the same time, when it's the other way around, when the spirit of darkness is controlling your mind, you'll always find that even if there is, uh, there is nothing happening around you, you're always having a constant fear of insecurity. You're not sure what's happening next. Constant fear is there happening. Because mind is being governed or controlled by the spirit of darkness. Look at what the Bible says. Verse number two. He says, be not conformed. Be not conformed to the pattern of this world. Be not conformed to the world. But at the same time, but be renewed. He says what? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you believe sitting in this room say that I'm a new creation in Christ? 
We sing the song. We sing that scripture a many number of times. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. We, that is the starting point. That is a starting basic point. But our mind needs to be renewed all the time. It needs constant renewal. That verse, if anybody be in Christ is a new creation, it's not settled once and for all and the mind go anywhere. No, you got to take care of your mind. The Bible also says what? Your mind needs to be renewed. The mind needs to be transferred by the renewing of your mind. That means every day there has to be renewal. Look at what he says. Be transformed, be changed by the, not removal of your mind, but renewal of your mind. Don't remove your mind. Sometimes we follow the Lord and we live a, a life like a mindless Christian. No, God is not raising up people who are mindless, who are mindful. Renewal of the mind. He said that you may prove, that means you may testify. You may have some evidence to give what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That word prove, that means you have a living proof. So when your mind is renewed, you'll always have a proof of the goodness of God. You'll always have a testimony to give as a proof and say, my mind, that's what the thing is about renewal of the mind. When the mind is renewed, you'll always have something to testify and say, hey, God has done this for me and God has done that for me. Go to the same scripture in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 23. There's a, it, say, it says the same way. Be renewed in the spirit of the mind. Be renewed in the spirit of the mind. While well, along the Bible says, if anybody be in Christ, he's a new creation. But at the same time, he's saying what? You be renewed in the spirit of the mind. Is that what it says in your Bible, church? Now go to Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 3. Landmark scripture. Never forget this. Write it. Let it be written. Let it be embossed. Let it be engraved on the tables of your heart and your mind. Look at what he says. Isaiah 26 verse number 3. He says what? You shall keep them in what? You shall keep them in peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Did I read it correctly? No, I didn't read it correctly. I missed something. He says what? He keeps them in perfect peace. That means there is something called peace and something called as perfect peace. There are two different things. He said, God keeps them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Whose minds are focused completely what you call fixed on God. Fixed on him. Fixed on Jesus. He says what? Be renewed. He said, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of the mind. Here it says what? Listen church. A mind that is controlled. The mind that is governed. The mind that is looked after by the spirit of God. It will always be in a state of bliss. In a, when I say in a state of bliss. It's not bliss in the way that. Oh loads of money and loads of wealth. No church. There are people who have loads of money. But when it comes to peace they are disturbed. The perfect bliss is a person who has an amazing state of mind. What is called? Very peaceful. No matter what's happening outside, you're peaceful. Are you with me, church? A, perfect, a person who's at perfect peace, it does not matter what the storm is doing outside. I don't care. I can take my pillow and I still go to sleep. That's why he says, look at Jesus, the author and finisher of the faith. Because he could sleep very well. Rather, I would say probably he was snoring. Somebody had to shake him. Jesus, we are perishing. Get up. Don't you care what's happening outside? We are perishing. Somebody had to shake him up. Get up. Get up. This is no time to sleep. That talks about Jesus being in perfect peace. No wonder the word of God says, when you're running your race, the race, the course that is set for before you, make sure your focus is on your mind be on you. You will be at peace. So let there be storm outside. Does not matter. Because he says, as long as our mind is stayed on the Lord, he will keep us in perfect peace. Because, he says what? Because he trusts in the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Ask God for grace. Even as you're going to partake of the communion table this evening. Lord, I want to enjoy what is the definition of perfect peace. Not for one season, not for one day, not for a moment. Listen, church, he did not say his mind is, stay, those people, he will keep them in perfect peace when you get your salary on the first day of the month. So as the month goes down, the peace just depletes. 
Oh, the perfect peace is not when you see an, an in, uh, what do you, you see an increment or you see a promotion. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Your peace is not stuck in your designations. Our peace is stuck with the Lord. Are you with me, church? Oh, today I got a new offer and I'm going to a Fortune 500 company. I'm going to a bigger company. Oh, th- listen, our peace is not stuck with the Fortune 500 companies. Our peace is in the Lord. He says, whose minds are stayed. Present continuous tense. Be renewed in the spirit of the mind, the Bible talks about. Hallelujah. See what the definition of peace is. Go to Psalms 140, verse number 7. Psalms 40, verse number 7. One forty verse number seven. In the book of Corinthians, the Bible says, "Who has ever known the mind of the Lord? Who can read? Who can know the mind of the Lord? Who can ever fathom the mind of the Lord? Who can understand?" He says, "But yet we have the mind of Christ." Psalms one forty verse number seven. What does it say, church? He says, "Oh God, the Lord." The strength of my salvation. You have covered my head when? In the day of the battle. It is not just in the day of the blessing. In the day of the battle, what have you done? You have covered my head. Wow. That's a good word, church. When you are in the midst of something that you are not prepared for, in the midst of something that you didn't expect, in the midst that you are in the midst of trouble, in the midst of all the difficulty, the Bible says what? He says, Lord, you have covered my head, you have kept it. That's why I said, as much as God is interested in our heart, God is also interested in our heads. He is interested in our minds. And when he knows when you and I are going through a fight, when you and I are going through a difficult phase in life, when you are going through severe oppositions, severe troubles, he says what? Lord, you have covered my head with, you have covered my head in the day of the battle. Hallelujah. Because the real battle is happening in the head right now. Hallelujah. If you sit right now and you're being honest with yourself, do you know there are some conversation happening in your head? I cannot hear it, but it's very loud. Even here in the church, the conversation is still happening. The neighbor cannot hear it. Your husband cannot hear it. Your wife cannot hear it. Children cannot hear it. But it's too loud for you. And you can hear it loudly. The conversation is happening. Head, head. Because the spirit of God also wants to take over. At the same time, the spirit of the world also wants the same thing. And whoever has the mind has the control. Hallelujah. May I ask you a question? Have you ever felt tensed or worried? Have you ever felt tensed or worried? Anxiety? Have you feel fearful any time? May I ask you a question? If you say yes, all of us, including me. Where does the fear, where does the anxiety, where does the worry, where it all starts? Where does it start? Does it start on your nose? It's on your ears? Or your, or, or your, your toenails? No, it starts here. Once you start, then it transcends, it sends everywhere. You'll start somebody shivering. You'll find a palm that is what sweaty. You'll find somebody who's sh- your legs are shaking. You, you, you don't know what to say. Everything happens. Why? It starts here. Then it gets everywhere else. It is not the other way. Are you with me, church? It is never the other way that you feel tension here and then goes here. No, you don't feel tension and then goes here. No, when you feel tension, it goes in your hands. Everything goes haywire. Your language, you start to, you start to falter or you, your speech gets you know, out of sync. You're not able to make sound decisions. You just don't know. You're confused. You just don't know what to do. When the tension is happening here, listen, sometimes you're sleep deprived. Hallelujah. Are you with me church this evening? I don't want to talk about... Have you ever come across, uh, 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 you know, you, you're walking through a corridor or you're walking through a step and you see the ceiling a little low, they put one board. When you're getting down the step or you're walking down, what does the board signify? There is some cushion over there and they write in red in bold letters. What does it say? Huh? Watch your head. Mind your head. The topic today is mind your mind. Mind your mind. Mind your head. Mind your head. Because it's very important to mind your head. 
So when you mind ahead, you don't see you like a macho man. Oh, I can go through this wall. That's stupidity. When you see that thing, watch, you'll do what? You'll duck. You'll just bend down. You'll just go aside. You'll make sure. You know, you will not go there. Let me do a headbutt. No, you will bend down. That means if I'm careful to read that signboard and I'm careful to take care of myself, then we also need to pay attention to what the word of God is saying. Mind your head. Look at somebody and say, mind your mind. We have heard this word many times, mind your business. No, no, today we need to mind our own mind. Mind our own. Look at somebody and say, mind your head. Watch your head. When you say mind, watch over your head. Very important. If God is giving importance to take care of our mind, then I think it is important to take care of it. Amen. Ourselves. Because the Bible says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You be renewed. Transformed by the renewal. That means renewal is in my hand. I need to take care of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Psalms 23 and verse number 5. Psalms 23 verse number 5. What does it say? Don't look in your Bible. Look at me, look at me, look at me. What is Psalms 23 verse number 5? I told you, even if it's 2 o'clock early in the morning and if somebody tells you to recite Psalms 23, it should come. What Psalms 23 verse number 5? Huh? Very, very, hey man, you're very, you're making some noise like, no, no, no. I want it to be clear, loud, loud. Okay, am I loud guys? So let me see how loud you can get me. What is Psalms 23 verse number 5? There's a three, it's a three layered verse. It's a three layered verse. When I say three layered verse, how many of you like burgers? That verse is a burger verse. You know burger, right? What's the first line? A layer? It's a bread. What's the next line? The patty, whatever it is. And the next is what? Bread. So three levered. What's the first layer? He prepares what? He prepares the table. He furnishes the table for me in the presence of my enemy. That's the first one. What's the next one? He anoints my? He anoints my head? Not with water. He anoints my head with oil. What's the last part? Uh -huh. What's the last part? What's the last part? And my, and my cup runs over. I leave the first and the second, first and the last. I want to pay attention to the third one. He says what? It is God who anoints my... By the way, who wrote this psalm? David. King David wrote it. King David wrote, right? Now go to Psalms 92, verse number 10. Go to Psalms. I want to put a base to what I am going today. Psalms 92, verse number 10. Psalms 92, verse number 10. Psalms 92 verse number 10. He says what you have exalted. He says my horn has been exalted like the horn of a unicorn. So God has strengthened my horn. God has strengthened my head like the head of a unicorn. Look at the next part. He says what? He, he said what? I shall be anointed with what? Oil. Fresh oil. There he said, it is God who anoints my head with oil. Here he says what? I shall be anointed not on stale oil. Yeah, I shall be anointed with what? Fresh oil. Come on, is that what it says in your Bible church? Fresh oil? Let's tie down another scripture. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 9, verse number 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 8. Macy, I love you man. You're awesome. You're doing very well. Super. You're just... Neck to neck with me. Awesome. Keep it going. Look at what the Bible says. He says what? Let your garments be as white. Always white. Let's just say always white. Oh, come on guys. Are you with me? So the dress code from next Sunday is everybody come white. No. He's not talking about the external garments. He's talking about the inside man. Wearing the righteousness that is there in Christ Jesus. Are you with me church? He says what? It's not you come to church and you wear a righteous robe and come to church white. And you go outside finish. No. No, no, no. He's talking about the righteousness that you and I have in Christ Jesus. Keeping your heart clean. Keep your mind clean. Keep your hands clean. Living and walking in the righteousness that is there in Christ. He says in Christ Jesus. He says let your garments always be white. Look at the next part. Can you read it out together with me? Let thy head Lack no ointment. Come on guys, are you with me? What's the last part he says? Let not your head lack oil. Let not your head lack the ointment. Who is he talking to church? He's talking to every son and every daughter. He's talking to everybody in the house of God. 
He says what? He anoints my head with oil. Then he says he anoints my head with what? Fresh oil. Here the Bible says, when you step out, make sure your head is not lacking. The ointment. Are you with me, church? To enjoy the oil of the Lord is a portion of every son of God, every daughter of God. Hallelujah. Let, let's pay attention to a uh, little bit on the head. When a pregnant woman, when she gives birth to a baby, what comes out first? When it is positioned, come on, all the moms in the house. What is supposed, what is in the original setting, in the correct design of God. When God put this design in the place, when it comes to delivery, what comes first? Head. Always. When the head, because uh, if you look at the doctors, when you go to the gynec, she'll always, when the, when the mom is towards the end term, what is happening? They will always look for what? They look for the head position. They will wait for the head position and say, wait, wait. Even though the mother is getting impatient, she's going through the, through, the, the, through the pain and the agony and all kinds of discomfort. And the doctor, no, wait, mama, wait. It is doing what? The head is taking position. It is in the right place. It has to come to that. Then you get, am I, am I making some sense, church? When you see babies that are not in the right position, when the babies are not in the right position, if the head is positioned in some other distress, some other, do you know there are four types of other kinds of position that the baby can be in? Am I making some sense? And I want to tell me what is those babies called? When the baby's position is the other way around, the head is up and the leg is down, it's something else. You also have babies when, they are, when their legs are and the butt is also positioned in the wrong way. It is dangerous. Those babies are called what? Breach babies. They're called breach babies because they are at the risk. The risk is not only for the baby, the risk is for the mother. And you see, please correct me, Sister Sunita. He says what? Whenever you have breach baby situation, there's always a C-section. It's never a normal delivery. It's because the risk factor is there. And when the risk factor is there in that breach, there is a lot of risk going on towards the baby. That's why they call breach babies. And four types of breach babies come in that because the position is different. But in the original design, what is coming first? It's always head first. Hallelujah. Now, if you, want, if you want God to do something for you, if you want God to deliver you from something or the other, it is always supposed to be head first. Lord, get my hand out first. Lord, I want my body out first. Oh, no, no. You are asking for trouble. If you say, God, I want you to fix me. I want you to help me. I want you to get my, Lord, get my things right in my life. The way I think, the way I make my decisions, the way I make my judgment. Oh, Lord, I want to get, I've been in this place for a long time. I need to come out, Lord. Lord, please help me. He says, I will do it with one thing, head first. He always starts, that's the original that. He will always start it with head first. Hallelujah. When, I, when, when, when Anna was pregnant uh, with Judah, at uh, that time she was in labor and she labored for 11 hours. Long, long, long time. She's, it was a long time of labor, very slow. Uh, I don't know, Sister Sunita, were you there? For Ajuna, you were there for Abby. You were there for Abby. Where in the time of that 11 hours of <coughs> uh, labor, uh, finally he was born at 9.54 in the morning. In the morning, but prior to that, she, the whole night she was there in labor. Now, when that happened, when, when they saw uh, the opening was happening and they could see this part of the head, and the moment that head started moving in the direction, the direction was not direction, was not And the moment the head popped out, they just held the baby with this. By the way, if you ever have all the husbands in the house, and you want to, if you want to, if you get your wife pregnant, be in the ward. It's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. Because you're the reason for it. So you have to, you need to experience the miracle that is happening in the ward is not a joke. It is a miracle that is happening in the ward. And if you ever get an opportunity, you should be in the ward. And I thank God. That's why I could use today in my, in my analogy. The moment the, the midwife had a grip over the baby, all she did was she just pulled the baby out and he came with ease, just came like that. There was no struggle. For 11 years, she may have struggled through that thing. But the moment the head came out first, the body just came out. The body did not the body did not have to struggle. He just took a few fraction of a second. The moment the head was out, the whole body just came out. There was not a struggle. Listen church, it's the same thing with us. If God has a grip over your head, your body will just come out. You'll come out of your delivery very quickly. You don't have to struggle. 
there is no struggle when you when you allow god to give get his hands around your head that's why i said great peace have they whose mind is stayed on the lord so moment you have god in control over your head your body will automatically like one noodle that you know how you listen you don't have a struggle when you're swallowing a noodle anybody has a struggle when you swallow your noodle no you don't it just goes with these come on yes no you may have a struggle with your with your with your chicken and with your with your what you call uh, your 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 we um, not rice re your steak and your dinner but with no it just goes right in the same way when the head is in proper position and the grip is there with the midwife all she just 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 brings it out just comes out without any struggle church if you've been laboring in your situation for a long time get your head correctly positioned your body will not struggle it just come out am i making some sense just tonight look at what he said by the way when david wrote this the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want he was a king at that time and then in that story he make the says lord he anoints my head with oil as much as it is important for us to pray the lord that he taught us a disciples prayer he says what give us today our daily bread it is far more important to pray the say lord anoint my head with oil i'll tell you why it's okay leave him some leave him he's exploring this place it's okay it's okay he says that make sure that he doesn't fall there he's so happy baby do you know this is the first time he's doing in the church he's exploring himself it's okay now he said lord anoint my head with oil where did he pick this up from when he said the lord is my shepherd can somebody remind me what was david's previous profession before he became the king what was his profession church ha huh, sorry he was a shepherd boy he was a shepherd he himself he then no wonder when he came under the lordship of the moment he came under the covering of the lord he said lord i know what i did as a shepherd i want you to do this to me no wonder he called on the lord he says you are my shepherd and i shall not walk he immediately realized he immediately could connect hey i was a shepherd and i know what i did at that point in time i want god to do it for me that's why he said lord anoint my head with oil why what was the connection that he had as a shepherd what was the connection that he had that i became the king as a lord and you are my shepherd i want you to anoint me because in those days pay attention to this a lot of new people in this room place room in this room are new or may not know this there is a significance of the shepherd using the oil using the oil where not on his head but on the sheep because every time they took their flock to graze every time they took their flock for their feed outside they didn't take them to a curated garden they did not take them to a place it was like ready made agriculture they would take them in the wild in the in, on the mountain top in the valley below ups and downs in the wild just take them just a staff in the hand and you just lead them now when they led them he would do one thing the shepherds in those days they would do one thing they would make sure that the head of every sheep every flock of them what they'll do they'll drench it with all they'll pour oil on their heads either they would use linseed oil or they would in those days they would use olive oil and both oils are very sticky in nature why why would they take the oil and pour it over their heads and drip it around and leave them and then let them go because these ones are grazing their heads are always on the floor they are always looking for grass they're looking for a feed so what is happening is they would be in the dirt at all times exposed to all kinds of flies the moment they were exposed to all kinds of flies what these flies would do they will be like moving around all their op- looking for the openings Mm, all of the place they'll be looking for they'll be flying all around what are they doing they're looking for the openings of the ear they're looking for the openings in the nose they're looking for the openings around the on the eye they're looking for the openings and why are they looking because the moment the fly enters inside after some time what you'll do what it'll start laying eggs once once the eggs are, 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 are hatched what happens those ones don't to fly out they make their way inside their head once they made the head inside once they have made the way inside there have you ever seen i don't know if you have seen in your country but in my place i've seen have you seen those flocks or the sheep or the goat when they take when they are when they are when their head is messed up they're doing like this 
continuously beating that. No, no, they are not having somebody is playing the bass guitar for them for the head bang. No, that's not the thing. That they are having a head because there's something that is messed up in their head. And they're constantly doing this. Why? Because something is gone inside. The, 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 the uh, uh, thing of the fly, the, ultimate, the thing is not to just stay here. The ultimate thing is to get here. So what he would do, he would take the oil one by one, one by one, anoint the oil, uh, pour oil over the head and let go. Go wherever you are. Can somebody remind me how many times the Bible records that David faced the lion and the bear? How many times? Only once. Only once does the Bible say that David testified when he stood before Saul. He said, hey, sir, when I was alone by myself, the Lord delivered me from the paw and the claw of the lion and the bear. Only once it's mentioned. And you know what? We are also looking for the lion and the bear kind of testimony. We are looking for the Goliath testimony. And say, oh, we want this. Hold a minute. Flies are flying every day. We are no different. That's why you could take the analogy or you take the thing as a routine, as a shepherd. Now he said, Lord, now you are my shepherd. Please anoint my head. Because I may not be exposed to the lion and the bear every day, but I'm exposed to the flies that fly around me all the time. So I need you to anoint me because I know if, they, if I allow them to get inside there, they will get inside here. Hallelujah. The fly problem is found in the low places everywhere. It's in the routine of life. If you say, Lord, I want to operate in the spirit of a sound mind and pray, Lord, anoint my head with oil. Because it's the oil that does not allow the fly to get. Because the moment the fly, if this, the guy is well oiled, if the, if the sheep is well oiled, when the fly is flying around, flying around, it'll get stuck. It'll not go forward. It'll not go because that's the work of the oil. Just allow uh, do, do not allow the progress of that fly to go further it'll die there itself another place that they would do is if they when they, when they go into places which has holes the holes were all over the place so what these guys would do these shepherds if they allow it they've marked a territory what they'll do is first go and just do what spray oil all over the place why because out of the hole, you just, you know, these guys are down. They are not paying attention. Their eyes are down here and there because of the way they are. So simple those sheep are. So they're always down looking here and there. Whatever happened, they never know from where a snake would just come out from the holes and go strike them. But the Bible's, <coughs> but these, <coughs> these shepherds had wisdom. They would spray oil all over the place. So anytime any snake would come out to, 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 to strike them, there is no grip because it's slippery ground. Every time you want to rise up, there is no hold for the thing to move around. Why? So they had to be stuck in their holes as long as these guys were in that place. Come on guys, are you with me this evening? Ask God for grace. Lord, I want to be an oiled Christian. Lord, I, I want you to anoint my head with oil. I want you to anoint my head with oil. I want you, Lord, I step the, I don't know. Listen, if you say, Lord, I don't want to have flies around me. Wrong prayer. Because you just don't know who's going to taunt you. You just don't know who's going to needle you. Flies are going to come. You just don't know temptation where it is. Don't say, Lord, today I don't want temptation. Temptation will come, my friend. Because the Bible tells me he'll give me a way of escape. Are you with me, church? There is so many flies that have flies called greed. There are so many flies that are happening around and flying around as lust. These flies are very much freely all over the way. Real, daily routine, daily normal things. But sometimes our focus, where is the lion and the bear? Where is the lion? Wait, don't look for the lion and the bear. They will not come every day. The flies every day. Watch out for the flies that are around. Watch out for the flies for whatever that may try to get into your head. Listen, sometimes the, 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 the flies may get into your head. It may get any kind of news that you're listening from outside. Any kind of gossip that you're listening from outside. Any kind of wrong or horrible news that you're listening from the outside. Hey, by the way, how many openings do you have head up, shoulder up? How many openings do you have? How, guys, how many openings do you have from your shoulder up? How many openings do you have? Count how many you have. Five? 
Seven. Watch out for your openings, your ears. Watch out for your openings, your eyes. Watch out for your nose. Pastor now knows how. Nose is very important. You make the right judgment. If you got your nose opening wrong and if you make a wrong judgment, you know that is exposed to something that is not from God. Be careful what is going inside. Don't buy somebody else's language and put it in your mouth. You're opening up for the... What happens is, the result may not be immediate to get into your head. It may happen one month, it may happen some few months, and then you wonder, hey, how did this get into my head? Oh, you, there was an opening. Are you with me, church? Oh, why am I going through this? Why am I feeling depressed? Why am I feeling discouraged? Why am I feeling low? Why, why, why? My head was nice. In the morning, I woke up and I was in good spirit. And by the time I came into the day, while I went through the afternoon, while I went, oh, why am I messed up? Why? There's an opening somewhere that happened in the morning or during the day. Because flies will fall. Uh, flies will fly around you. But the promise of the word of God says, well, Lord, anoint my head with oil. Lord, you anoint me with your word. Pastor, where, which oil you're talking about? Listen, the word of God is oil for us. He's, the Bible says what? As long as we have our minds on him, as long as we have the mind on the word of God, our mind will be at peace. Ooh, pastor said, mind on the Lord. Where can I find the Lord? I want to have, he's not just talking about the physical appearance. He's talking about his word. If you are mindful of the word of God, our minds are full of the word of God, you will always be in a place that nothing affects you, nothing gets inside here. Hallelujah. There are many people, there are many power of darkness that is waiting to strike us outside. When you are oiled, they have no control. They have no grip over you. Come on guys, are you with me? You just don't know which hole, who's hiding. You just don't know from which crevices or which opening that is there. Somebody may come and try to, to, to strike you. You are not ready for it. Listen, if you are somebody who says, Lord, anoint my head with oil. Listen, that God will take care of whoever wants to strike you. Because they have no grip over you. They don't have grip to come out. They say, you better stay inside, Baba. This guy is anointed. You know, it is so important to be anointed. And this, to be anointed is not for an elect and select for. It is for everybody. Come on guys, are you with me? Listen church, anoint your children with oil. Before you sign them up with the best of tuitions, pray every day. Lord, anoint my son. Anoint my daughter. They may not understand. No problem, you don't understand. You anoint them. You be the shepherd for them. You be the under shepherd for your own children. Because you just don't know what flies they are exposed to outside. Are you with me church? If you look at the target today, the, 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 you, you look at the, the transgender and all kinds of uh, what you call identity crisis that people are having in the world. They are not looking for adults. They are looking for little children. They want to do what? Fly. Push it in the year now at this age. Because by the time to come to 13, 12, 15, 16, oh, I, I, the guy may be, the, 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 the child may be a boy. And he says, like, yeah, I have feeling like girl. Oh, somebody opened many years back. Sometimes it may take that many years to do what? Mess the head. Oh, I don't know. I feel like a girl and I feel like a boy. Excuse me. It is my responsibility to take care of my children. Are you with me, church? Every dad in the house, every mom in the house, be a shepherd for your own children. Pray and ask God for grace. Pray and ask God for grace over them that you would anoint them with the word of God. Speak them the word of God. Teach them. That when they grow up, they don't have identity crisis. Who am I? I don't know. He, she, both, all. Hold a minute. Teach your children. Because, listen church, we are not all the time with our children in the marketplace. They are on their own and you just don't know what flies are flying around their head. Are you with me? You see children at tender age, they are smoking. At tender age, they are into substance abuse. You just don't know which of our child is exposed for those flies around. But pray, God, anoint my children with oil. That's why I said, as much God is interested in our heart, God is interested in our heads. No wonder the Bible says in the Ecclesiastes 9, verse 8, he says what? Make sure that your heads do not lack ointment. 
The beauty of our God is he's not anointing us with stale oil. He anoints us with fresh oil. Are you with me, church? Go, sit before the Lord. Start your day. Lord, anoint me with your word this morning. Lord, a fresh word. I don't know what the day is lying ahead of me. I don't know what I'm, whom I'm going to face, how I'm going to face, when I'm going. Lord, I don't know. But Lord, I want you to anoint my head. Lord, I want to start my day. Anoint your head and walk out of the house. Don't go with dry heads, just, just walking out like that. Then you have a problem and you come back home and say, hey, this is not the way I started. I don't know what happened during the day and I messed up today completely. And you come across and say, please don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Please, please just give me my space. Listen, when you have a give me my space problem, no, then there's something God, somebody's messed up here. The, the mess up is not with the spouse. The mess up is not with the children. The mess up is not when they make uh, this monkey dance and down, sing aloud, scream aloud. The problem is not them. The problem is something happened here. Leave me alone. When you have a leave me alone situation, no, then you really say, God, I want to come to you. Anoint my head. Fix my head. Heal me this morning. Heal me in this time. Listen, our God is a merciful God. He can get inside your head and heal. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Today, one common fly is flying everywhere, which causes depression like this. Anybody sneezing, they're depressed. And depression does not happen overnight. It's over a period of time. Are you with me, church? You feel low, you feel heavy-hearted, you feel like, you know, something that's troubling all the time. Listen, church, you just allowed some fly to get inside, either through your ears or through your eyes. Through your opening that is there. That's why it is important to take care of your head. The ultimate goal is not the ears. The ultimate goal is not the opening. The ultimate goal is to get inside here. No wonder the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Keep renewing your mind with God's word. He says what? He says, by the washing of the water, by the word. Are you with me, sir, this evening? No wonder this man was a shepherd and he could go back to the Lord and say, Lord, you are my shepherd, you do it for me. I've done it, Lord, you do it for me. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. To God be all the glory. Go to Exodus chapter 4. Quickly, Exodus chapter 4. Oh, no, before you go to Exodus, why did I go to Exodus? Go to, go to, go to, go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. See what the Bible says. Give no room to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Is that what it says in the Bible? Do not give place to the devil. Is that what it says? You look at the same scripture. And in another light, the Bible talks about in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. He says what? Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Don't be ignorant of it. Don't be ignorant how the devil works. Don't be ignorant of how the enemy works. Don't be ignorant. Don't be simple. Don't be timid. Here he says, do not give place to the devil. I've used this analogy on, uh, uh, multiple times here. How many of you like to give place to the mosquito on your face? Come on guys, talk to me. How many of you enjoy the mosquito when it's on your nose? How many of you enjoy a mosquito that is there right on the, on the, on the back, back of your palm or your arm, wherever it is. Or oh, there it's on the thighs. Well, it's on the, in your calves. It's on your legs. It's on your feet. How many of you enjoy a mosquito? Oh, please, I love it. Please, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I love it. I like it, like it, like it. How many of you are very kind to the mosquito? Well, maybe, maybe he's hungry, Baba. Let him feed. He didn't get anywhere else. My, okay, fine, no problem. Or oh, then he's, oh, no, I'm loaded with blood. Take more, more, more. No, no, you don't tolerate the mosquito, right? Even if it is there on the right on your cheek, that time you're not bothered about the cheek. You're saying what? Even if it means to slap, even if it slap yourself hard, your goal is not to give you a slap, but your goal is to kill the mosquito. Yes, no? Now, if we are so particular, if we are so careful, and we are so mindful of that teeny mini mosquito, forget mosquito. Forget mosquito. Have you ever come across mango flies? Fruit flies? How many of you enjoy fruit flies around you? Those, man those fruit flies are the most tender loving things. Doesn't give you any harm, right? Come on, yes, no? But when it comes that you want to, you want to, we don't want to give place to those ones. Those smile, small ones, they're harmless. 
you see the house flies when it comes near you what happens you sometimes you even slap your nose hard yes no then why do we give place when it, or why do we have the tolerance when it comes to the works of darkness when it comes to the devil he said don't give place that means oh if you flip this verse in other way if you flip this verse that means we can give place to the devil that means we do give place to the devil because here he says what neither give place that means the giving the place is in my hand the tolerance of the works of darkness in my family oh it is i give it's okay you can stay here no 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 if i have no tolerance towards mosquito then we also need to have zero tolerance to the works of darkness in our life Amen. are you with me church ask god for grace because he says what do not be ignorant of the devil's devices listen you and i can be praying from now to eternity lord let not devil come near me it is never going to happen it is good news it is not going to happen many a times our prayers lord let this flies go away no the flies will be there but what can allow us or what can help us navigate and maneuver through lord anoint my head lord let the devil come right left center i don't care lord you anoint my head lord my mind would be at great peace perfect peace when my mind is stayed on you ask god for grace even as we partake of the communion table this morning this evening ask the lord and say lord heal my head heal my head don't pray oh lord keep the flies away from me have you ever come across flies getting into your nose especially this fruit fly have you ever come across you talking 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 and suddenly the, the the mosquito went and went into your, on your on your tongue and you swallow and you come on guys have you <laughs> am i the only guy going through this it happens right have you ever come across you're there and suddenly something goes into your ears how, how do you uh, aha okay i feel nice please please i, I want you to i feel tickle nice please I, no no you want to get it out even though you may not have swallowed that uh, mosquito you spit it out you go into the bathroom and you do all kinds of things to get you feel Ugh! i pray you would feel the same thing when it comes to the powers of darkness that you have zero tolerance are you with me church zero tolerance towards thing that come that flying around your place and he said what no i'm not giving into this there is no chance for this one to get into my into my space because the flies will come but the bible tells me you don't give place Amen. bible tells me what you anoint your head with oil and fresh oil make sure your head is lacking no ointment let make sure your head is not dry and dry in jesus name go to exodus chapter 4 quickly 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 exodus chapter 4 and stay there with me this is the time when moses had just an amazing uh, what you call encounter with the lord he had an amazing powerful encounter uh, with god you saw uh, we read that he had what he call a tree that a, a bush was on fire yet not consumed it was a spectacular thing that in front of him, never seen before never heard before never experienced before somebody else said, no first time the whole thing is bushes on fire and yet it is not consumed and the lord tells him listen i have heard the cry of my people i want you to go back to egypt because he was on the run for 40 years and said now you going to go back and get my people free I want my people to go free from their bondage. I can hear the cry come to me. I want to send you now. Go now. Go 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 go. Now. That's what it was in chapter four, <coughs> and the Bible says what Moses is telling the Lord. He says, "Lord, those people will not believe me. The Jews, the, 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 your children will not believe me, Lord. Who am I? Uncircumcised? Who am I? What am I? They will not believe me. It is not going to happen." And the Lord tells, "What's in your hand? Oh, I have a rod. Okay, throw it down." first miracle what happened the rod became what it became a snake second miracle what did he say go back again because the bible says the moment it became snake the bible says moses fled from the scene he ran away god come 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 back again what's the second miracle he said what pick it up by the tail and it became a rod come on yes no next miracle he said take your hand put it in your bosom around your chest and the bible says bring it out it became leprous fourth miracle oh do one thing put it back again in the same place bring it out the bible says what it became restored back to fresh flesh back again normal he has already experienced a miracle and the power of god in his life personally nobody watching around and now also now go back no 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 lord they will not listen to me 
Then he begins to try to negotiate with God. He's saying, Lord, Lord, I have a, I have a speech impediment. I have a speech problem. I am very clumsy the way I speak. I, 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 I falter. I, 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 you all, I, you see, see how I'm going through. Lord, I can't speak. I can't hold a conversation properly. I can't speak straight, plain people. I can't hold. I'm very clumsy. I'm faltering. I'm stuttering. I cannot hold a conversation and all that stuff. Guess what? In that story, God tricked him. Do you know God tricks even today? Oh, nobody will say amen to that. Oh, pastor. Pastor is speaking the word of God. Wait, hold a minute. God tricked him and says, wait, you have a speech problem? No problem. No worries. Your brother is going to come on the way. He's on his way to say hello to you. He's going to greet you. His name is Aaron. And when he comes, I will speak to you. You put the words in his mouth and from here on, he will be the spokesperson. But I am going to take you. At that point in time, God did not tell him, okay, I'm going to send you to a speech therapist. We'll get you fixed. Get your speech therapy done very well. You can speak with eloquence. eloquence, and You can speak with clarity. We'll dress you up nicely and then make you presentable. No, no, no. I see a lot of grace in that story. If you look at the Bible, the history of God is, he's always taken the imperfect people and used them for his glory. So if you have imperfections in your life, great, you're a great candidate for the Lord. Don't wait that God, when I become fully perfect, that time the revival already, uh, uh, the rapture would already, already happen at that point in time. There is no need for us to get perfect and then, no, Jesus will come and go by that time. He tried to buy it out and negotiate with God. As a matter of fact, God tricked him in that. I said, no, 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 you're the right guy. Here, I'm making an alternate here. He will speak on your behalf. Go. Next, the Bible says, they came to Pharaoh, chapter 5. He came to Pharaoh and he began to speak. What do you do? Hey, the Lord has sent me. The Lord has heard a cry of his people and he's sent me a message saying what? Let my people go free. So I'm come to take the people. We have come to worship God and all that kind. And then what do you do? He threw the rod there straight away, public display. What happened? The rod became what? It became a fish. No, it became a snake. Oh, Pharaoh said, oh, that's easy. I've seen that before. I can do this too. What do you, I called all the magicians. Hey, come on guys, show me a trick. And they threw their rods. And what happened? They also became snake. They became serpents. But what did Mo Moses' rod do? He went and swallowed everybody else. Was Pharaoh impressed? Wow, never seen that before. Great, come on, take the people and go. No, the Bible says he was upset. Oh, people have so much of time to cry unto the Lord. They have so much time for prayer. They have so much time to seek the Lord. They have so much time to worship God. They have so much time to go outside in the wilderness and come back. Oh, so much time. Okay, from tomorrow, no straw. Because these guys were only doing one work, hard labor, making bricks. And for making bricks, they needed straw. And all the time it was coming from the stock, coming from the storage of, of Pharaoh. From tomorrow, he says, you will find your straw and you will make the bricks. And at the same time, he said what? The production will not go down. The production will stay where it is. What happened? The people said, Moses, you landed us in trouble. Please go home. We don't need you. We told you in the first place. We are better off here in bondage. We are better off here living under slavery. Why did you come? Why did you mess around? You brought the word of God. We told you it is not going to work. Look at the way we are. We are in difficult. We are in deep trouble. Fast forward, chapter 6. He comes to the Lord and says, Lord, I told you in the first place. It was a bad idea. I shouldn't have gone. Why did you ask me to go? I told you people will not believe. Pharaoh will not believe. Go to verse number 28. Chapter 6, verse number 28. He comes to the Lord and he's having a conversation with the Lord. Bad idea. He told me, Lord, I told you in the first place it is not going to work. Chapter 6, verse 28. And it came to pass on that day when the Lord spoke unto Moses in the land of Egypt. God is speaking to him. God is not giving up on him. Look at the next verse. What does he say? And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, I am the Lord. Speak thou unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, all that I say unto you. He says, go, I will still send you. You are my man. You are the spokesperson. You are. I know you have a, 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 a challenge when it comes to speaking. But you are the guy. You are not perfect. No problem. You are the guy. You are the guy. You are the guy. You are the guy. Go next verse. And Moses said unto the Lord, Behold, I am my man with what? Uncircumcised lips. Faltering lips. Clousy, a clumsy, clumsy lips. I can't speak properly. I am stuttering. I'm faltering. I am lousy when I'm speaking. I have a problem. 
as if the deliverance of israel de depended on, on on the eloquence of moses speech the way he behaved i wish i had clear as if his the way he spoke as if the, that speech was going to deliver people no it was not the eloquence of his speech that was going to deliver people it was the word of god Amen. it was god who was going to deliver and he's giving so, by the way do you think god knew that he had a speech problem So when you pray with your problems, don't bring your problems. I said, I'm praying. Listen, church. God knows your problem. Amen. But sometimes we pray in such a way and we bring our problems away. I said, God does not know. He knows it. We feel, oh, I'm praying so much. No. No. We are not comforting God. We are comforting ourselves. We feel that, oh, I feel light-chested if I bring my problems. Listen, in this whole thing, no. God did one thing, very loud. Very loud in this verse, very loud. You can hear it very, very loud. He says what? And the Lord, he, told Moses, he, he told the Lord, Lord, I'm a man with uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. See what the Bible says. That's why I said, God was very loud when he said something. He was very loud. His action was very loud. You know, action speaks louder than words. Do you think action speaks louder than words? Very loud. And there was an action that you see that God brought or the action that God did in this place. Go to verse number one. He says what? And the Lord spoke unto Moses. I see. See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. And Aaron, your brother, shall be a prophet. Can you see some action here? What was the action? What was the action? Here here he said, see I am sending you as a God to Pharaoh. And your brother is a prophet. Can you see an action? What is the action? What is the action? You said action speaks. You agreed with me. Action speaks louder than word. Can you see God's action in this place? Because prior to this verse he says what? Lord, I am a man with uncircumcised. I am a man with, I have a problem with my speech. I am stuttering. I am stammering. I can't hold proper conversation. Pharaoh will not listen unto me. And the next verse says, the Bible says, the Lord said, go. I am sending you as God unto Pharaoh. Can you see an action? What is the action? Oh, sorry? I can't hear you. Huh? No, God's action, God's action is very loud. Let my people think. While Moses is saying, let my people go, pastor is telling, let my people think. There's a, it's a very loud action. It's not mentioned. But it's a very loud action, the way God responded from verse 30 and verse number 1 here. It's a continuation. That's why I said go to the next verse. I didn't tell you go to the next chapter. It's the next verse because the verse starts with what? And the Lord. The Lord, the Lord continued his conversation from verse number 30. And he said, and the Lord responded. And the Lord said, there was a big action that is missing here that is not recorded, but it is very loud. God ignored. Action speaks louder than words. Listen. God has not changed today. There are times he ignores us. Because we are crying. He didn't say, oh my boy, come here. You have a speech impediment? Come, 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 come. Go to this so-and-so place. So-and-so lane number. So-and-so thing. One guy is there. He will take care of your speech therapy and then come back. God did not even bother responding to him. Please check your Bible if you see that God responded to that problem. God did not respond to the problem. Hey, Moses, I will fix your speech problem. Your speech therapy, I will fix it first. Come, come, come. No, God did not. God ignored it. See, when God ignores it, go back. Don't go, go back there. When you look at this action where God is ignoring, when God is not doing the things the way you want to do it, listen, church, don't run after it because he's doing something better. And what did he say? Hey, I'm not going to fix your mouth. I'm going to fix your head. When you go back, I'm fixing your head. What did he say? I'm a man with uncircumcised lips. Pharaoh will not listen. The problem with, with him was, every time he went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, he was there with a slave mentality. Slave mindset. Please, sir, let us go. What God said, I'll fix this, not this. Most of the time, we say, Lord, you fix my body. You fix my this. No, God says, I will fix this. Because your mind is mind of a slave. And Pharaoh does not engage with a slave. 
No wonder the Bible says the spirit God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He says now I'm not going to send you as a slave. I'm sending you with somebody who has a sound mind. I'm sending you not as a slave. I'm sending you as a savior. The rest is history. If you read this entire scripture very well, you look at the way Pharaoh dealt with Moses. Pharaoh was always a bully. He was bullying Moses left, right and center. As long as Moses showed up as a slave. But starting chapter 7 verse 1 onwards, the whole table turned when God touched his mind and the Bible says what? From there on, Moses became the bully. What makes me say that? Because the Bible says, then followed the ten plagues. Yes, no? Starting with the river Nile. He turned the water into wine. Oops, sorry, not wine. He turned the water into what? Blood. Because for the Egyptians, river Nile was something that was as good as God. They revered their rivers. They brought, they, for them it was a very, what you call, uh, auspicious thing. That For them, River Nile was like their God. Egyptian, one of the Egyptian gods is River Nile. When the next plague came with the pl plague of the frogs. You know, frogs is like gods for, if in the Egyptian mythology or Egyptian thing, they have frogs as their gods. Now, if you look at it, if you look at all the plagues, all the objects that were used, they were the, those were the mini tiny gods that the pharaohs followed. And God used the same thing and it became a snare in their mouth, in their ears and uh, frogs. Listen, just imagine going to bed and in your quilt there is one. Frog come on you. You're putting your head to, to rest on the pillow and there is something coming from there. Imagine you're sleeping and surrounded with frogs. Imagine you're just digging into your tandoori and there is a frog sitting inside of it. You want your gods take overloads. Now if you read the scripture well, when it came to the lies, when it came to the locusts, when it came to all this, every time that they had a problem, he would call Moses and say, Sir, please entreat your God, take away this. Moses became the bully. Moses began to bully because God fixed his head. And no wonder Moses, no wonder Pharaoh said, Sir, please pray to your God. Let this plague be averted. Let this plague stop. He said, what? My cattle is dying there. Sir, please do something. Sir, please do something. Sir, he said, entreat the Lord. If you read the scripture, 8.8, 8, he says, Lord, entreat your Lord. Entreat your Lord. Pray unto God. God, God would have mercy on me. God would have mercy. Look at what he says. 8.8. 8. He said what it says in the Bible. 8.8. 8. Moses 8.8. 8. 888, eight, eight, number 8, number 8. Jaldi, jaldi. Ah. And then Pharaoh was called Moses and Aaron and says, Entreat unto the Lord that he may take the frogs from me. Is that what it says in the Bible? Please pray. I'm fed up of this. Please pray. See, when you operate not as a slave, but as somebody who's sound minded, situations around you will come and say, Can you pray for me? People around me, they will bow. The ones who think that again, hey, listen. Very important. God did not say, I will take Pharaoh out of your life. I will fix your head first. God did not say, okay, you have a problem with Pharaoh. He's the one who's bullying you. He's the one who's, okay, I'll take him out. No, he says, no, no, I will not take him out. I will fix your head first. When God fixed his head, Pharaoh became was well, like on puppy. Why? Because the Bible says what? God told him, now I'm going to send you as God. Wow. That God is a, is, a, is a small g God. By the way, can somebody define me? God. What is God in your head? What do you mean by God? Come on, guys. What is God? Can you define God to me? In your plain language. God. Oh my gosh, such a simple question. So much of depth, you're so deep lost, God. No, he's not, he's not lost. So don't go deep finding, just define me. What is God to you?
Come on, guys. What is God? He says, I'm going to send you as a God. But I so ask you a question. What is God? Who is God? What is the definition of God? Who is the definition of God? What is the definition of God for you? Powerful being? Super? Anything else? Only powerful being? Sorry? I can't hear you. You are so nervous, man. Super nervous. Simple question it is. It's not a tricky question. What is God to you? What is God to you, man? What is God to you, guys? Sorry? Creator? All right. Anything else? Merciful? Awesome. Slowly people are warming up. Oh, sorry, sorry. He is almighty, super. What else? What is God? God, God. The word, when you say God, is somebody called supreme? Do you say somebody who, uh, God who has dominion, who has all power? Are you with me, church? Would you like to put in simple layman's language? God is somebody who's in charge. He's always in control. Come on, yes, no, no, yes. God told Moses, I'm sending you as God who will have dominion. All along, Pharaoh was in charge. But I'm sending you now as you are in charge. You will give the direction. He said, what, what I put the words in your mouth, you will go and do what? You will speak the word. That's it. More than enough. I'm not sending you as a big G God. I'm sending you as a small G God. But you will be a God to him. He will follow your instructions. Come on, are you with me, church? Now look at what the Bible says. Go to John chapter 10. Last verse probably for tonight. Last verse for tonight. John chapter 10, verse number 33. John chapter 10, verse number 33. Jesus, have mercy. God. He said, then the Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone you not, but for the blasphemy and because you being man, you do what? You equate yourself or you call yourself or you make yourself God. Look at what he says. They were, up, they were very upset. We are not trying to stone you for good work, but you're trying to equate. They're telling Jesus, you're equally equating yourself and saying that you are God. Go to the next verse. What did he say? Jesus did not keep quiet. What did he say? Verse number 34. And Jesus replied by, gave them a fitting reply. And what was the reply? Is it not written? He did not say, it is not written in the traditional books here and there. He said, it is not written in your own law. What is written? You are gods. He says, written in your own book. It is very well documented that you are gods. Then he gave an explanation in the next verse. What did he say in the next verse? Verse 35. He says what? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. May I ask you a question? Even right now as you're seated, do you think the word of God is coming to you? So if you say, if you go by this word, by that qualifier that is there, if you say the word of God is coming to you, the message of God is coming to you, then God says what? He's looking and he says, you are gods. So if the word of God is coming to you, then God looks at you as a God and gods don't talk carelessly. Gods don't talk mindlessly. Gods don't talk foolishly. Gods don't talk like slaves. He says what? He called them gods. God is not shy from, from calling you and me gods. Not the gods of the big G God. How many sons of... See, we answer this thing very well. How many sons of God in this place? You'll put your hand up. That we have no problem. But we certainly have a problem with this. How can we, I be a God? No, no. Don't think of the big G God that you are. Listen, a God will give birth to a God. Amen. Come on, guys. Can you expect a God, can you expect a dog giving birth to a cat? Come on, guys. Talk to me. A dog will give birth to a dog, right? Then why can't God give birth to another God? Why do we have a problem with, I've, I've shared this verse, the scripture some other place and there was a guy who said, no, 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 this, no, hold a minute. There's a problem because our minds are limited. We are not ready to accept it. Here the Bible says, the Bible is not scared to call us gods. 
What did he say? You will go before Pharaoh as God. You will be in charge spiritually speaking. You will control it. You will dictate. You will be the bully. You are the one who will say this, this and it will come to pass. Somebody said creator. You use God's word and speak into being as if it was. As if it is. You speak the word. Things will happen. Come on guys, talk to me. No wonder the Bible says life and death are in the power of your tongue. I'll say one more time. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. In Jesus' name. Shall we arise and pray?